Actually leaving right We're now. We're peacing out right now. We are trying to break free of the Tucson suck. Tucson doesn't suck. It's just it draws you in, pulls you in, holds you. You can check in anytime you want, but, but you can't leave. Forget about leaving. Yeah. So Santa that's, Fe tonight, yep. and then Abiquiu, New Mexico. After that, yeah. And then our plans take us into Colorado. Probably should mention that Ruta had a little bit of a surgery before yeah. we were able to leave Tucson, and so she is moving slow. I'm moving slow and needing some recovery time. So things have been slightly postponed, but my health will be better, and that's really all that's important. Yeah. So the next couple of weeks probably won't look like what. We planned. We've done in the past. Yeah. We're gonna be Airbnb in it for a little bit, um, just to give Ruta a chance to heal up, and um, we'll see some sights and yeah. probably put out a couple shorter videos. But um, yeah, we're we're on the road as of today, and uh, saying adios to Tucson. <laughs> first stop would be in the tiny town of Coyote in New Mexico. We truly were enchanted by the scenery on the drive-in. The New Mexico skies just seemed to hit differently for some special reason. extra good. You cannot wait to uh, lounge here. Mm. Oh yeah, we'll be able to stay here for the next couple days. Super good. Abiquiu sits about 45 minutes from Coyote and is the only nearby source for fuel and supplies, so we would invariably spend a few days exploring the Pueblo and surrounding area. Today, residents of Abiquiu claim mostly Tewa Indian heritage. Abiquiu has the distinction of being the location of the Holman studio of famed American modernist painter Georgia O'Keeffe. We didn't want to miss the opportunity to tour her home and learn more about her fascinating life.
Can't be overstated how excellent our tour guide through the property was. He had a tremendous knowledge of Georgia O'Keeffe's life and works and could answer any questions our group had in great detail. Although O'Keeffe had been coming out to New Mexico much earlier, she lived permanently in Abiquiu from 1949 to 1984 in an 18th century Spanish hacienda which she restored here overlooking the Rio Chama Valley. This property has had water rights for two hours on Monday mornings from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. to water the orchard and the two gardens since the 1700s. And that's all the water it gets other than two hours on Monday mornings. There is a jade here, there's a jade in the kitchen, this iron plant was hers, the fern was hers. Oh You're gonna see uh, alloy plant in the kitchen that's her. All the plants, in other words, are were here when she was here. We both came away from our tour with a different outlook on O'Keeffe's art and the landscape of Northern New Mexico. We also wanted to see Ghost Ranch, another nearby place where she lived and drew inspiration for her paintings. It's easy to see why so many people continue to flock here to awaken their creativity. Although not O'Keeffe's residence, this cabin is one of the many historical structures on the property. Oh, oh. look, our little friend. Hello, little doggy. Having a week of good weather at our Airbnb in New Mexico was a great luxury and finally gave me some time to work on the solar system on our truck. up into Colorado and um, we spent a week here and anytime you spend a week in a nice place it's real hard to leave. Yeah it's just been super cozy and comfy and beautiful and there are hummingbirds everywhere it's just really quiet. I'm always excited to go to the next place and yeah it's real sad to leave. It's tough you kind of get settled yeah. in and then, uh, and then it's time to go. And it's time to go.
We traveled west out of Coyote to Chama, then north into Colorado along the beautiful and scenic Canejos River. As luck would have it, the fall colors were peaking, making for a perfect drive. we're actually capturing a rancher moving his cattle probably to lower pastures but he's out there on horseback he's got a couple dogs We'd end up in Antonito, Colorado, a strange little town with a very strange set of buildings. Honey, what is this? What is this place? I have no idea what this place is, but it's unique. It's weird. Later research would inform us how this odd set of towers would come to exist in such an unlikely place. It's known as Kano's Castle and was built by Vietnam vet Donald Espinoza in thanks for having his life spared in the conflict. It's always our hope to stumble on sites like this while we travel, and this curious construction certainly became the topic of conversation for the rest of our day. We moved further north and the scenery continued to impress us as the peaks and colors became more and more stunning. Soon we reached Salida where we would again stop for a couple of days. We were lucky enough to be able to schedule a visit with our friend Ian at Boulder Camper Vans in Salida. We got a look at one of their current projects just getting underway. My name is Ian Hannum. I'm the manager and builder um, here at Boulder Camper Vans South. Um, we build custom camper vans. Right now I'm standing in one of our Sprinter 144s that we're building for a customer. Um, this one's going to be a full decked out custom build um, like most of our vans. So it's gonna get a, like a radiant floor, um, which we've already got um, like insulation down under okay. here. And it's like a fiberglass composite, like insulated material. So it, like, it is its own insulation and subfloor in one. And then it's got channels for the glycol tubes. Okay. They also sell like a hydronic heater. So okay. that will be the blower heater and the radiant floor oh, okay. and the hot water. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Like um, all in one unit? Yep. Very yeah, cool. so it's a diesel furnace that goes under the van and then just pumps yeah. glycol. And, We're familiar and, with the Wabasto. Yeah. And right. then what's the appliance package look like? Uh, so they're getting the shower system. Um, they're going to get an induction cooktop, um, an isotherm refrigerator, um, like full kitchen with like a sink and, and all that good stuff. And then you do like a full like solar power kit for it as well? Yeah, so they're gonna get four 90 watt solar panels and then an additional two portable solar panels. We don't have the front suspension on yet, but the rear suspension is a set of lift. Um, it's like two more inches of lift springs. Um, and then we do, um, this kit's I think Fox shocks in the back. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's also um, Falcon adjustable shocks that we do sometimes and those are pretty bomber. But we usually do like a tire ladder combo in the back, a Alvan's like Sherpa rack with a yeah. big cargo box and yeah. full. She's getting an Illumines roof rack. Wow. Um, yeah, and then we usually do like a front front bumper with a winch. And how much was this build again? Uh, 194. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, I wasn't quite sure about that either. Maybe someday we will. Uh, We'll go to this kind of plan, but I think for the time being, we like to have 
four-wheel drive capability is, yeah. is really important. I mean, I know these have four-wheel drive, but... Not like Pete. I'm guessing we can go places that this one can't. So yeah, this is what it looks like when it's completely gutted. And uh, the build is just getting started. Queen, I'm trying to get your face. I'm trying to get your face. If you're interested in a professional conversion for your Mercedes van, visit bouldercampervans.com. continued north into ever more spectacular scenery. Although we knew we should be generally trending toward Montrose, with no firm agenda we were free to take the long way, linking some of Colorado's best backcountry roads. officially at 10970. We are heading up to Independence Pass and uh, this is a shelf road um, and no guardrail. And our truck is like... <laughs> and poor Pete's like... <laughs> Zach said it was slightly over 12,000 feet. I've actually been here before, many years ago. It's actually snowing a little bit. It's freaking cold. <laughs> Zach's walking out to, uh, I don't know, it's like a little overlook, looking down into the valley. And uh, I am resting in the truck, just sort of hanging out. The weather would turn on us as we entered Aspen and continue to rain on our way to Paonia and to Montrose. But the clouds and the moisture only seemed to make the peaks more mysterious and magical. Time in Grand Junction was mostly spent catching up on business, restocking on food and supplies, and producing these videos. All right. After about six days in Grand Junction, Colorado, we are officially hitting the road again. Um, we're headed up to Dinosaur National Monument um, to hang out and see what we see. But I'm ready to do something. I think we're both ready. Are you ready to do something? Time to do some stuff. Time to do some stuff. Itching to get back out in it. So yes, Dinosaur National Monument. Yeah, here we come. I don't know. Maybe dig up a dinosaur. Come on, all 
I can see is your butt. To Grand Junction. Let's go inside and have a beer. Oh, this giant fake bear. <laughs> uh, it smells like timbers, rat poop, and uh, history.